And what does your donor mean to you? Everything. My name is Christian Price, I'm a history teacher. Um, I had a liver transplant in February 2018 and this is my story. I had a stomach infection, I had mild food poisoning um, and I went to the doctors and had a blood test um, and the blood test came back abnormal and the GP to his credit said I want to repeat the blood test so he did and they came back abnormal again so he referred me to um, Wolverhampton New Cross Hospital where I was first seen by the haematology department because they thought it was a blood infection that I'd got. Um, they couldn't find anything and they referred me to gastroenterology um, and uh, they, they identified me as suffering from uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease um, and uh, the doctor there knew Professor Newsom here at the QE and he referred me to see Dr. Professor Newsom um, and the story went from there basically. I was diagnosed with NASH um, and cirrhosis um, and it progressed until I needed a, a liver transplant. In 2017 they first talked about uh, needing a transplant. I went through three assessments and I was turned down each time because of my health. Um, I was considered too big. Uh, they didn't think that I would survive the anaesthetic um, and there were other reasons for not doing the transplant. And then on the third occasion that I was turned down, I met Dr. Matt, uh, Dr. Matt Armstrong, um, and he said, well, we're not gonna be able to do the transplant this time, we're not gonna be able to list you this time, but would you be interested in doing exercise to see if we can get you fit enough to survive, first of all, the anaesthetic, and secondly, the, the actual operation. Um, and at that stage, I was so um, desperate to, to be listed, I said yes, um, I would do anything to, to be listed and to get a transplant. Um, and so I did, uh, I think it was about five months of exercise with um, Alice um, and uh, she got me through it. And I was eventually listed in December 2017. And then in February 2018, I got the phone call at half past four in the morning after about three phone calls had come through and I'd missed them because I was asleep. Um, and I finally answered and they said, oh, we didn't think you were going to answer. And so um, I said, oh, yeah, and I was, I was half asleep, so I wasn't really sure who I was talking to. And so it's the QE here. Um, we think we've got you a transplant. Can you get here for six o'clock? So uh, it was a case of, yeah, I'm on my way. Um, quick random phone call to my parents who were asleep as well. Can you get here? I've had the phone call. I've got to go in. And we got to the QE at six o'clock in the morning. And at seven o'clock that evening, I was being taken down for a transplant. My family were brilliant. Um, my mum was my principal carer. Um, and she, to this day, has been absolutely fantastic. Um, I wouldn't have got through it without her. Um, that's, that's the truth of it. And I think your carer, your, your main carer, uh, you, you need to be really certain of who you're choosing because they are everything, they really are important. The day itself was a blur um, from sort of like the phone call in the morning to actually going down. Um, I, didn't, I didn't sort of record it as, as other people do, but um, it was a case of blood tests, x-rays, scans, um, and then waiting. There's a lot of waiting involved on that day. Um, and then, you, because they have to get the, the donor liver to the hospital, so you're waiting for that to come, and then you have to wait for the tests to be done on it to make sure that it's compatible. Um, and after that, you're waiting to see the anaesthetist, the surgeon, um, any final hiccups that might arise, and then getting into your gown, getting ready, um, saying sort of farewells, although it wasn't really a farewell, it was a I'll see you later to the parents, um, and then going into the operating theatre. The operation took just under eight hours. Um, there was a complication partway through in that um, one of the blood vessels um, 
came away and they had to reopen me up to re reseal it, re you know, resew it and everything. But apart from that, it was textbook. It, it, there, was, there were no problems at all. I just wanted to get better. I didn't focus on whether or not I was going to wake up. I was always certain that I would wake up. I was certain that I'd get through it. You know, um, I think you have to have that positive outlook to, um, to getting through it. Because if you have any anxieties, that's going to um, hamper your recovery. Um, but I'm quite a religious person, so my faith helped me as well in that sense. And um, I had a lot of people at church praying for me and uh, looking after me as well, so that helped a lot. Um, and it was important that that happened. I mean, initially they thought he won't survive the anaesthetic. I survived the anaesthetic. They thought that I'd be in um, intensive care for a week. I was in there for just under two days. And they thought that I'd be in hospital for at least two to three weeks, if not longer. And I was out in seven days. So um, the exercise and the programme that Matt set me on worked wonders. And if it wasn't for that, I, I really don't think that the journey would have been that simple or that easy for me. I've had an organ donation card since I was 16 and my parents have known about it since I was 16 and they've always known that that was um, something that I felt really strongly about um, and I'm pleased to say that all of my family now have organ donation cards even though you don't necessarily need them these days because you opt, you opt out rather than opt in. Um, but I made sure that my family knew that that was my wish and that if anything had happened and I hadn't come round from the operation, that organ donation was something I wanted them to be aware of. Um, it was important to me because of you know, the gift that I was given. Mm -hmm.